welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. And you know on this channel, if you've watched videos, this is all about giving you world-class technical skills to go and attack your technical problems, attack your frustrations, put them to bed and put them to bed for good. And as a step forward on that journey, I'm pleased to announce the latest reference book in our series. This is the Six Sigma Yellow Belt Handbook. If you're just starting out and you're just getting involved in solving your technical problems and removing your frustrations, this book is full of practical advice on how to use simple quality tools, how to run measurement system analysis, gauge R&R, &R, in a practical way so that you understand what the results are telling you, you understand your process physics and you understand how to put your problems to bed for good. If you're starting out on the journey of Six Sigma, this is 180 pages of fantastic practical advice that you're going to find absolutely um, absolutely indispensable in your work. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this text is in the description below. Go and click on the link and buy your copy of the Six Sigma Yellow Belt Handbook now. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and in this video newsletter what we're going to talk about is something that I've been chatting with somebody online on my, uh, in my comments uh, area, which is about what is a common cause. What's a common cause? And obviously the opposite of that, therefore, what's a special cause? Now, I gave an answer at the time. This is, I mean, this is the beauty of debate, folks. So I sent an answer to the person uh, in the comments box. Uh, they sent me a comment back. We had a little chat about it. Um, and then subsequently, I had a little think about what I consider common causes and special causes in statistical process control. And I thought, I'm just gonna make a video about what my thoughts are about this. You can disagree with this. Please leave some comments in the, the bottom if you think there's something you can add to this but here's my current thought process about common causes and special causes so to me common causes so there's two there's two ways to look at this so my first thought about common causes are they are expected events okay so they are expected events so to me what common causes is anything that's expected so it's not about short term long term it's not about whether it's just appeared or not appeared are the events expected and of course if they're expected what we can do of course is we can put methods in place to make them appear less often or to control the variability that they give us so that the process works better okay so expected events so what do i mean by this so let's say you run a five axis machining center so i'm just going to use this as an example because it's simple okay things that would be expected tool wear would be expected okay now, some of my clients, they, they run these types of machines. You know, what that means is they put a new tool in every 10, every five, um, or they re-grind the, the grinding wheel every 10 or every five. So this is, this is a very short, common variable. It's a common cause. It's just happening all the while, all right? So that's very short term. All right, but what else have you got? Um, maybe then on a slightly longer time scale, you get a new 
batch of material. Okay, now that might happen, let's say once a week. So new batch of material, it creates a slight, um, slight variability in the. Now that's an expected event. Now obviously you can put rules in place to, uh, again, to minimise the effect that a new batch of material will have. So for example, you set tolerances. Tolerances are designed to stop the material condition going up and down and creating variability in your process. Maybe you can't avoid that and maybe a new batch of material does move the process up and down. Well, okay, we can still put a response in there. So what does the operator do? Measures the next three, you give them some rule about how much adjustment they, they might make and then they correct that event. That to me would still be a common event. It's an expected event. It's happening maybe once a week, maybe every few days. So this is happening all the while. This is happening once a week. But there's more expected events that happen over longer periods. How about the feed screw? Where? Okay, so when you operate these CNC units, there's a feed screw that's moving the tool backwards and forwards. And if you're making the same item, of course, what happens, you keep using the same part of the feed screw and you start to wear the feed screw out. And what typically companies do is they will move the program to use a, a part of the feed screw over here. And then eventually, of course, the feed screw has been used up. You have to put a new one in. Okay, so feed screw wear is an expected event. This might happen, by the way, over a period of, let's say, five years. It, it depends, depends how much work you're doing, how much volume you've got, how fast you produce an item, etc. So how complicated your items are and things like that. So this is happening over five years, but it's still an expected event. You can put rules in place. So you could say, we're gonna check this for every year. We're gonna check this every six months. We're gonna replace the feed screw every five years. You can put rules around this. Again, what are you doing? You're preventing the event from creating wild variability. You're controlling how much variability, how much of an effect this common event will have. Okay, now then, what would a special cause be? Well, this would be an unexpected event. All right, so um, these are unexpected. So an example of an unexpected event uh, would be material out of spec. So you've agreed with the supplier to hit, a, to hit a tolerance window. Suddenly they deliver something by accident, bang, outside the tolerance. That would be a special cause to me. What else? Some kind of breakdown. So five axis machining center. Let's say one of the bearings collapses. So the machine just goes bang. Um, that would be a special cause. So these are unexpected events. Okay, now then, that's a theoretical definition of how I look at processes, what's common, because the common events, of course, the reason I look at them like that, I can put controls in place. Okay, I can control these and get the, the common course of less and less of an effect, get the process of greater capability. So if you want to drive for Six Sigma, You've got to know how to reduce these. You've got to know how to control these. And that's why I, I think about my process in this way, expected versus unexpected events. But in the world of SPC, what would this be? So if we start talking SPC now, what would be a common cause? What would be a special cause? Well, now this is the way I would view it. A common cause, this variable 
was present when I calculated my limits. So when I collected the data to calculate the SPC limits, if this cause was in the data set, then it is common to the control limits. If the event was outside of that, it would be a special event. So this one, for instance, here, this is an expected problem. It's an expected event. But because you're not going to wait five years before you put an SPC chart in, of course, this problem isn't in this calculation. This variable isn't in the calculation. So really, what common events are is what was involved in the calculation. And anything that's outside of the calculation will become a special cause. Now, because of the way Schuert gets you to calculate your control limits, the way he does it, of course, is by using within a group variability. He uses the range within group to make this calculation. So that being the case, there is a good chance this will be a special cause this will be a special cause. This will be common. So, you know, Schuert's calculation is often known as the short term. You know, he, he often looks at this and we call it the short term capability. And that's because of the special way that he uses the range to make the calcs. So you've got to be thinking how did Schuett make the calcs? What variables were present in the calcs? Anything outside of that is going to be a special event as far as the SPC chart is concerned. Okay, so there's two ways of thinking about it. There's thinking about it from a process control point of view, um, and that's the way I like to look at it because I'm constantly thinking practically. How can I make the capability better? So how can I think of expected events that I can make have less of an impact on my process against unexpected events? Or there's the SPC definition, which is, was that variable in the calculation? If it's not, everything outside that is going to be classed as a special event. Okay, so, you know, and of course, you can make those special events, you can still put controls in place and make them much rarer or make them have less of an impact on the control chart. You can still do all of that good stuff. But there's my view about common events and special events, common cause variability and special cause variability. It would be interesting to know in the comments below, fellas, what's your view on common cause and special cause variability. I look forward to hearing from you soon.